Is everyone's response to go indie is just to start a Kickstarter to make a series? Or a lengthy pilot? Let's talk about other alternatives that aren't that. Hey guys, it's Tsuriko Pintoa, and today I want to talk about some independent animation projects that you can tackle that aren't necessarily short films, feature films, pilots, or any form of web series. Now the reason why I want to talk about this is that in order for independent animation to thrive, we have to look at other ways that we can showcase independent animation without trying to rival works of major studios. And animation can be really expensive. So if you're someone that wants to contribute to the world of independent animation, here are some smaller form projects that you can consider. Let's talk about loops. So these are things like cycles. These can be walk cycles, dance loops, a small piece of animation that actually repeats itself. The great thing about cycles is that you can start animating your character doing some form of action right away without having to heavily plan what to animate. It's not resource heavy or really hard to do in most cases. Generally, people like seeing animated loops. From my experience, people on social media like seeing my loops. And because of how easy it is to digest, how accessible it is, it gets shared a lot. So I think loops are a great way to start animating stuff without having to over plan. The great thing is that they're loops that a lot of people can enjoy. The only issue is that they're just loops, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. The next thing are studies. So technically and figuratively, a lot of animation tests can be considered a study. But one thing that I want to emphasize is that animation as a medium can also be used as a tool. So let's say I'm studying a subject, whether I'm studying from live action, from another piece of animated thing, or just an exercise. Animation helps me better understand the movement and the action. So let's say I'm studying live action footage of some dancer. Now, a challenge that I could do is what if I animated a character design that I did matching to that live action footage of that actor dancing. The only thing I have to worry about is problem solving how to match the designs to the action more so than coming up with something from scratch. I think this is a great way for you to understand your character designs and how to optimize it better for animation as well as understand your subject matter. The only issue that I have with this is that it's not the most creative so it's not like you're adding anything new. The next one I want to talk about are moments and vignettes. So I feel like these are just like random scenes that you can come up with or just miscellaneous character moments. These could be things like a character doing a really specific action or a little joke or gag. And the thing about these is that you don't have to think too hard about the story or finessing the writing. This could be just really atmospheric moments of your character just chilling in an environment. And the emphasis is really just the vibes, the atmosphere, and just the moment. Like what if you were animating something that was very similar to the lo-fi girl, or just a character interacting with the environment. This could be a project where it's just one big shot or a few small shots. I think projects like these are great for tone building, character building, and world building especially if you have your own character and your own world in mind, without worrying how the story is being told. Animated comic panels. So this is something that a lot of people have been suggesting to me because I want to explore comics, but at the same time, I really don't want to leave the world of animation. Like I love that medium too much. And a lot of people have been suggesting, what if you had animated panels within your digital comic pages? So this could be effective in social media platforms, especially if that social media platform allows you to scroll through different pages that are actually movie files with animated comic book panels. Some of these panels could be a loop, some of these panels could just be a single playthrough shot that just kind of repeats itself. It's something that I'm not yet too familiar myself, but I feel like if you were trying to implement animation within comic book panels, that could be an interesting, you know, project. Another one that I'd like to suggest is mock game projects or actual game projects. A lot of people in animation are interested in jumping into the world of independent gaming as well. So I'm pretty sure that you have ideas of how to use some of those talents within game development. Now, another one that I want to talk about more is what if you want to make mock gameplay footage? So like if you're trying to pitch a game idea to a studio or whatnot, what if your animated project was just a mock gameplay? So sometimes I'll see animators animate a gameplay of a fan game project that they want to do. Or another one that comes to mind is seeing like D make videos where they take modern games and make a trailer or do a pass on it where it is like PS1 graphics, low poly stuff. And I feel like if you wanted to learn 3D and stuff like that, I think those projects are kind of cool. Now the next one I want to talk about are isolated scenes or dissonant scenes. 
Another way that I'd like to view these as is like mini cutscenes or bite-sized segments. I feel like this is kind of related to like animating a vignette or moment, like just a little small bit. Imagine you had a sequence in mind, maybe it's a fight sequence, maybe it's like a sequence with multiple shots. Imagine making something that's actually for a bigger scenario, but you're only animating a quarter of it. Some other references I can think of is, let's say, those old game cutscenes where it's like a character or player entering a room and then they encounter a boss and they get in a fighting stance, or you introduce a character and it's them joining your party. Like stuff that's like a bite-sized moment that has a bit of story, but it's not necessarily a short or a short film. It's just, you know, a small little segment. Again, these projects are great for character building, world building, tone building, exploring the visual style or the type of visual storytelling. If you're a storyboard artist that does animatics and storyboard sequences, what you could do is take a small bit of your sequence and just animate those few shots. And imagine pumping those out on a regular basis, you're bound to get a lot of support, a lot of followers, or a lot of eyes. Alright, the next one I want to talk about are sizzle reels, or openings. So these types of projects are actually very common in the independent animation space where a studio or a team or a person animates a little short, maybe it's like half a minute long, maybe it's a minute long, or a bit over. That's basically just a pitch trailer for an idea that they have. And in most cases, these could be flashy. Now, the great thing about these pitch trailers is that it's flashy, it's cool to look at, and you don't have to think too hard about how to tell the story. It's really just a montage of what this story or idea could be if it was supported and funded. Another way you can look at this is what if you were animating a fake opening for your idea? So something I noticed in storyboard artists or story artists that do DND with their friends, they actually make a little opening that's in an animatic format. And I think that stuff is really cool. And some will go even further to fully animate those openings. Now, I've done pitch trailers, proof of concepts, and sizzle reels in the past. I do think these projects are great for turning heads and getting interest, but depending on how ambitious you are, it can be a lot of work and a lot of the energy can be spent on more engaging projects. I know I said I'm avoiding films, short films, feature films, pilots, series, because those projects are super big animated projects, but what if you just did them in an animatic format? Now, I've mentioned animatics a few times, and I think animatics are a great thing to explore for independent animation projects. So a lot of us got into animation because we want to tell stories with the medium, but we've also accepted that a lot of animation is resource heavy and requires a lot of cost. But imagine making a short or a film or a little pilot or your web series just in animatic form. That's a bit more polished than a storyboard animatic reel for a studio production, you could figure out a style that is already watchable and enjoyable for everyone. Something that feels like it can be enjoyed in this animatic form. And you won't need to figure out the overall production, the pipeline, and all that stuff. You're mostly just focused on the storyboards, making sure the visual storytelling is tight, making sure the voice acting is there. The emphasis is more on the story and the writing. And look, if people really like it, they want to support it, then you can use that to eventually make a remastered version of the animatic where, look, you have the animatic done, you have the storyboard done, now you can just use that as the foundation for the animated project if you really want to have that finished animated look. I will say that even though it's still an animatic or storyboard form, it's still a lot of work. But I will also say it's way, way more accessible and doable than trying to make a studio quality film. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this video is because ever since the industry hasn't been doing good, a lot of animation people or people within the industry are starting to move into the world of independent animation. But that also means a rise of projects and not just any independent animation project, but like full fledged projects like a season's worth of series or a pilot, which leads to a bunch of Kickstarters being kickstarted. Now, personally, I'm actually in full support of this, but you don't have to go that hard just to get started with animation or independently made animation. My suggestion would be to start something small, something that you could do by yourself. And once you get a better sense of your repertoire, then maybe you could consider getting into bigger projects as well as getting other support, whether it's funding or manpower. What can you do without the backing of a whole team or without a Kickstarter? Anyways, that's all. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. 
visit the store through the link in the description below.